Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Blade Runner is a 1982 science fiction film that was directed by Ridley Scott. It stars Harrison Ford, Rudger Hauer, Sean Young, and Edward James Olmos. The storyline for the film goes that early in the 21st century, the Tyrell Corporation, during what was called the Nexus Phase, developed robots that they called replicants that were supposed to be an aid to society. These replicants look and acted like humans. When the superhuman generation Nexus 6 replicants that were used for dangerous off-Earth endeavors began a mutiny on an off-Earth colony, these replicants became illegal on Earth. Police units that were called Blade Runners had the job of destroying or basically retiring any replicant that makes its way back to Earth. It's now November of 2019 in Los Angeles, California, and Rick Deckard, a former Blade Runner, is called out of retirement when four known replicants have made their way back to Earth, with the leader of the crew being Roy Batty. One of them, named Leon Kowalski, tried to infiltrate his way into the Tyrell Corporation as an employee, but has since been able to escape. Beyond following Leon's trail in hopes of finding and retiring all of them, Deckard believes part of what will help him is figuring out what the replicants wanted with the Tyrell Corporation in trying to infiltrate it. The answer may lie with Tyrell's failsafe backup mechanism. Beyond tracking the four, Deckard faces a possible dilemma in encountering a fifth replicant, that being Rachel, who works as Tyrell's assistant. The issue is that Dr. Eldon Tyrell is experimenting with her to provide her with fake memories so as to be able to control her. With those memories, Rachel has no idea that she's not human. The problem is not only Rachel's assistance to Deckard, but that he is beginning to develop feelings for her. Interest in developing Philip Dick's novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, developed shortly after its 1968 publication. Martin Scorsese was one of the directors that was interested in filming the novel, but he never optioned it. Casting for the film proved terribly troublesome, particularly for the lead role of Deckard. As the screenwriter wrote the play, he envisioned someone like Robert Mitchum playing the role, and he wrote that character's dialogue with Mitchum in mind. The director, Ridley Scott, and the film's producers spent months meeting and discussing the role with Dustin Hoffman, who eventually departed from the project over differences in visions of the film. Harrison Ford was ultimately chosen for several reasons, including his performance in the Star Wars films and also his interest in the Blade Runner story. Ford was really looking for a role that had dramatic depth. One role that wasn't hard to cast at all was Rutger Hauer's role of Roy Batty, the violent yet thoughtful leader of the replicants. Scott cast him without ever having met him. He based it solely on performances that he had seen of the actor. His character's performance is probably the most flawless of the film. He's excellent at it. The movie used a number of lesser-known actors. Sean Young portrays Rachel, who's the experimental replicant that's implanted with memories, causing her to believe that she's human. Daryl Hannah portrays Pris, who's a basic pleasure model replicant. The casting for Pris and Rachel was pretty challenging in itself. And then there's Brian James. He portrays Leon Kowalski, who's a combat and labor replicant. And finally, Joanna Cassidy portrays Zora, who's an assassin replicant. Originally, the final confrontation between Deckard and Roy Batty 
was to have been in an old gym using martial arts like kung fu or something fairly similar to that. Rudger Hauer really disliked that idea, saying that it seemed almost too Bruce Lee-like and that he didn't know anything about kung fu anyway. He then came up with the idea of his character actually chasing Deckard. He also came up with many inventive ideas for his characterization of this role, like the moment where he grabs and fondles a dove. He also improvised the now iconic line, all those moments will be lost in time, like tears in the rain. He truly is the highlight of this film. They ended up hiring a female gymnast as a stunt double for Daryl Hannah in the scene where Pris attacks Deckard. But Ridley Scott had rehearsed the scene so many times that when they were actually ready to shoot it, she was too exhausted to do it well. The scene was then filmed with a male gymnast that they had been able to track down during a lunch break in production. The director's original cut ran for over four hours. Most of the crew admitted that while it looked really beautiful and was well done, it was mostly incomprehensible due to story problems in it, which necessitated additional editing and an explanatory voiceover that was done and added to the film. They had originally wanted to add the voiceover to supplement the mood of the scenes, somewhat like the music did, not a voiceover that literally explained everything. Sean Young plays a really front and center role in this movie, but she claims that her career was entirely derailed by the director of this film and that Ridley Scott intentionally did things in the film to make it tough on her. In the film's aggressive love scene between her character and Harrison Ford, she claims that it was done intentionally to try to get back at her. You see, at the beginning of the filming, Ridley Scott had asked her out numerous times, and she turned him down. Scott was irritated, and he eventually turned his attention to the girl that played Zora, Joanna Cassidy, which Sean Young was pleased to have happen because it took the eyes off of her. But she states that Ridley Scott hadn't forgot about it, and he did this scene specifically as a jab at her. Take a look back at this sci-fi classic. This is a pretty well done film. Thank you so much for watching and we'll continue to chase the classics.